and welcome to another class. Today we'll be looking at introduction to sequence of tenses in the theme English grammar structural patterns. And my name is Happiness Demo. Before we go into our lesson, let's take a look at our objectives for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define sequence of tenses, state the rules for sequence of tenses, and make sentences using the correct sequence of tenses. Now to our lesson. We cannot talk about sequence of tenses without referring to types of sentences or two basic types of sentences, the compound sentence and the complex sentence. This is because sequence of tenses applies mostly with these two types of sentences. But you do know that we have different types of sentences ranging from the simple sentence to the compound sentence to the compound complex sentence to the complex sentence. But today, we'll just have a recap on what a compound sentence is and what a complex sentence is. A compound sentence is a sentence made up of two or more main clauses or two or more complete sentences. A main clause is a complete sentence which can stand on its own and make meaning. On the other hand, a complex sentence is a sentence made up of one main clause and one or more subordinate clauses. A subordinate clause is a clause that is incomplete or is an incomplete sentence which cannot stand on its own and make meaning. And so we said... Compound sentences are sentences that have two independent clauses, usually joined by a conjunction. For example, we have Adama did not cheat in the game. This is one sentence. And here we have our conjunction because it was the wrong thing to do. This is another sentence. Now here, we have two complete sentences. One of it is, Adama did not cheat in the game. And the second sentence is, it was the wrong thing to do. Now these two sentences are joined by the conjunction because. So that makes it a compound sentence. The second example we have here is, Mother really wants to go to the market, but she feels too tired. Here also we have two sentences. Mother really wants to go to the market is one sentence. And she feels too tired is another sentence. These two sentences are joined by the conjunction, but. So these are compound sentences. Compound sentences just comprise of two or more complete sentences joined by a conjunction. And then complex sentences are sentences that have one independent or main clause and one or more dependent or subordinate clauses, just like I've explained earlier. Complex sentences have one main clause that is one complete sentence, and one or more subordinate clauses or dependent clauses. For example, I prefer to read books that are best sellers. In this sentence, I prefer to read books is the main clause or the complete sentence. It can stand on its own. It's an independent clause that our best sellers is not a complete sentence. It doesn't make complete sense. So it is the subordinate clause or the dependent clause. And that makes this whole sentence a complex sentence because it has one main clause and one dependent or subordinate clause. Next we have, I love people who are friendly. I love people 
is the main clause or the independence clause. It can stand on its own and make meaning. While who are friendly is not a complete sentence. It does not make meaning on its own. So it's a dependent or subordinate clause. Here also we have she gives good counsel. One main clause, it's a complete sentence. And to her siblings and friends, this is the subordinate clause because it cannot stand on its own. It depends on this to make meaning. So these are complex sentences because they have one main clause and one dependent clause. Now this is a foundation or a basis upon which we'll build our knowledge of sequence of tenses. Because in these sentences with um, main clauses and subordinate clauses, we find that we have different verbs or we have more than one verb. And sequence of tenses simply has to do with the way verbs change their tenses. And so in order for us to understand that properly, it's necessary we understand these types of sentences so that when we go into our lesson, we would get good understanding of it. Now, let's define sequence of tenses. Tense, remember, tense simply has to do with the time an action takes place or an action in relation to its time of occurrence. An action can take place presently or in the present. It can take place in the past. It can also take place in the future. So we have different tenses, present tense, past tense, future tense, and so on and so forth. So in complex sentences where there are two or more clauses, like we've said, the tense of the verb in the subordinate clause changes depending on the tense of the verb in the main clause. Due to the change in tenses, we have a process called sequence of tenses occurring. Sequence of tenses refers to the way verbs in a particular sentence change their tenses. The way verbs in a particular sentence change their tenses. In a sentence, you can have more than one verb. And there's a rule or there are rules governing the way those verbs change their tenses. This is called sequence of tenses. When the verbs follow the rules, what happens or what would have happened is the process known as sequence of tenses. Now let's take a look at some rules which govern the way verbs change their tenses in these sentences. Rules governing the sequence of tenses. You know, in complex sentences where you have more than one verb, most times one verb might be in the past tense, another verb might be in the present tense, and you would wonder why. But these rules which we would look at would tell us why that is and how we can apply it when we make sentences. The first rule states that when the main verb in the main clause is in the past or past perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause is usually in the past tense. When you have a verb in the main clause, in past tense, the verb in the subordinate clause usually also will be in the past tense. For example, I found out that he was upset after dinner last night. This is a complex sentence. Remember, a complex sentence has one main clause or one independent clause and one or more subordinate clauses or dependent clauses. In this sentence, our main clause is, he was upset after dinner last night. The main clause can stand on its own and make meaning. It doesn't depend on any part of the sentence to make meaning. Now, our subordinate clause here is, I found out that, because it cannot stand on its own. 
it depends on the main clause to make meaning. Now, rule number one states that when you have a verb in the main clause in past tense, the verb in the subordinate clause will also be in past tense. Now here, our main clause is, he was upset after dinner last night. And the verb here is the word was. And was is in past tense. Now if you look at the subordinate clause, I found out that. Here also you have the verb found. And it's in the past tense because the verb was in the main clause is in past tense. Our rule states that if the verb in the main clause is in the past or past perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause will usually also be in past tense. So if in the main clause we have was in past tense, which is the verb, in the subordinate clause also we should have found, which is past tense. It would be wrong to say, I find out that he was upset after dinner last night. That won't follow the correct sequence of tenses. So if a verb in the main clause is in past tense, the verb in the subordinate clause should also be in the past tense. The same thing goes for the second example. She practiced so hard that she got the award. The main clause from this sentence is she got the award because it can stand on its own. It's the independent clause. The subordinate clause or dependent clause is she practiced so hard that. It's not complete. It depends on the main clause to make meaning. Now, what is our verb from the main clause? The verb here is got, and it's in past tense. So, following our rule number one, in the subordinate clause, the verb should also be in past tense, and that's what we have here, practiced. We cannot say she practiced so hard that she got the award. That would follow the correct sequence of tenses. And lastly, we have he earned so much money that he became the richest. Here, the main clause is he earned so much money. And the subordinate clause is that he became the richest. Now, the verb in the main clause is earned, and it's in past tense. So, following rule number one, the verb also in the subordinate clause should be in past tense, became. It would be wrong to say he earned so much money that he become the richest. That won't follow the correct sequence of tenses. So rule number one states that if in the main clause the verb is in past tense or past perfect tense, in the subordinate clause also, the verb would necessarily be in past tense. Now, there's an exception to rule number one. There are situations where it does not apply. Now, when you have a main clause followed by a subordinate or dependent clause, and that dependent clause contains a universal truth. The verb there must not be in past tense, as we've said earlier. So this is the only exception to this rule. When you have a main clause followed by a subordinate clause, and that subordinate clause contains a universal truth. Now, let's look at our example so we would understand properly. The teacher said that patience is a virtue. Now, patience is a virtue, is a universal truth. Universal truth or universal truths are things that we believe, rules that exist in life, rules that cannot be changed. They are believed everywhere in the world. We cannot change them no matter where they occur in our sentences. So if the main clause has a verb in past tense, the subordinate clause which contains that universal truth must not have its verb in past tense, just like rule number one stated.
Now, let's look at this example, for example. The teacher said that patience is a virtue. Following rule number one, we should have here was. Because said, which is the verb here, verb in the main clause, is in past tense. So we should have this verb here in past tense also. But that is not the case because the expression patience is a virtue is a universal truth. That is how it is said. Not patience was a virtue. The universal truth is that patience is a virtue. So it would be wrong to say the teacher said that patience was a virtue. This is wrong. So when the subordinate clause contains a universal truth, this rule number one does not apply. And from this sentence, the main clause is the teacher said, while the subordinate clause is that patience is a virtue. So this rule does not apply when the subordinate clause contains a universal truth or when it speaks about a universal truth. Example two says, my mom told me that there are nine planets. Now this expression, there are nine planets, is a universal truth. It's a statement of fact. It's a universal idea. We all know that there are nine planets. And so the main clause here is my mom told me. While the subordinate clause is that there are nine planets. Now, the verb in the main clause is in its past tense, told. The rule number one will also not apply here because the subordinate clause contains a universal truth. So it would be wrong to say, my mom told me that there were nine planets. The verb remains in the present tense. It would not be changed because it is a universal truth. So, my mom told me that there are nine planets would follow the correct sequence of tenses. Then lastly we have, we learned that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. In this sentence we have the main clause, we learned. And the subordinate clause, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Now, in the main clause, the verb here is in past tense, learned. It would be wrong to make the verb in the subordinate clause past tense too, because this subordinate clause contains a universal truth. And that universal truth is that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So it would be wrong to say the sun rose in the east and set in the west. Making these past tense and past tense would be wrong because it is a universal truth. So this is a situation where rule number one does not apply, where you have a universal truth in the subordinate clause or in the sentence, your verb, which is in the main clause, which is in past tense, would not affect the verb in the subordinate clause. So this is an exception to rule number one, which states that when you have a verb in the main clause in past tense or past perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause would also be in past tense. But it does not apply when you have a universal truth in the subordinate clause of your sentence. Now, rule number two states that if the verb in the main clause is in the past tense, the verbs in the subordinate clause can be in any tense. That is, if it is introduced by the word than. When you have a verb in the main clause in past tense, in the subordinate clause, the verb can be in any tense as long as that subordinate clause is introduced by the word done. Now let's look at our examples. She taught English language better than she teaches literature in English. Now we said 
The verb in the subordinate clause can be in any tense, whether present tense, past tense, or future tense, as long as it is followed by, or as long as it is introduced by the word than. In this sentence, we have the main clause, she taught English language better, and the subordinate clause, than she teaches literature in English. Now here, in the main clause, we have the verb taught. And taught is in past tense. Remember rule number two says, if the verb in the main clause is in past tense, it can be in any tense. The verb in the subordinate clause can be in any tense at all, as long as it is introduced by the word than. So the subordinate clause here has the verb teaches. And teaches is present tense. So we have, she taught English language better than she teaches literature in English. So here, the verb in the subordinate clause is in present tense. Now, if you look at the second example, still using the same sentence, we have, she taught English language better than she taught literature in English. Here, the verb in the subordinate clause is in its past tense. And for our last example, she taught English language better than she will teach literature in English. Here, we find that the verb in the subordinate clause is in its future tense. So we find the rule, rule number two, applying in these sentences. And the rule states that when you have the verb in the main clause in past tense, the verbs in the subordinate clause can be in any tense at all. So in number one, we have teaches in present tense. We have taught in past tense. We have will teach in future tense. They all have the verb in the main clause in past tense. And this was possible because the subordinate clause is introduced by the word than. So when the subordinate clause is not introduced by the word than, these rules will not apply. We'll have to go back to rule number one, which states that the past tense of the verb in the main clause makes the verb in the subordinate clause past tense also. Now, rule number three states that when the verb in the main clause is in present or future tense, the verb in the subordinate clause can be in any tense, either past tense, present tense, or future tense. When the main clause contains a verb in present or future tense, the verbs in the subordinate clause can be either in the present tense, in the past tense, or in the future tense, depending on what the speaker intends or the meaning he intends to pass on to his listeners. For example, we have the sentence, Belema says that she won the race. Now, in this sentence, the main clause is Belema says. And the subordinate clause is that she won the race. Now, says is a present tense verb. And we have here the verb one in past tense. So the main clause contains a verb in present tense, while the subordinate clause contains a verb in past tense. In the second example, we have also the main clause having a verb in present tense, while the subordinate clause has a verb in future tense, Belema says that she will win the race. Now, the next sentence says, Belema says that she wins the race. In the main clause also, the verb is still in present tense, while in the subordinate clause, the verb wins is in present tense also.
So in number one here, we have the verb in the subordinate clause in past tense. Number two, we have the verb in the subordinate clause in future tense. And number three, we have the verb in the subordinate clause in the sub in present tense. So that's what this rule says. When the verb in the main clause is in present or future tense, the verbs in the subordinate clause can be in any tense at all. Present tense, past tense, or future tense. So here we've looked at the verb in the, in the main clause in present tense. Now let's look at a situation where in the main clause we have the verb in future tense. The first example says, Chijoke will join the school team if he practiced hard. In this sentence, the main clause is, Chijoke will join the school team. This is the main clause or the independent clause. And the subordinate clause is, if he practiced hard. Now, in the subordinate clause, we have the verb practiced in past tense. While in the main clause, we have the verb will join in future tense. Now, in the second example, Chijoke will join the school team if he practices hard. Practices is a verb in present tense. And then lastly, Chijoke will play ball if he will practice hard. In the subordinate clause, we have the verb will practice, which is in future tense. So here we see that when we have in the main clause verbs in future tense, we can have in the subordinate clause verbs in any tense at all. That is what this rule says. It says when you have verbs in present tense or future tense in the main clause or in the independent clause, in the subordinate clause, the verbs there can be in any tense at all. So that is what this rule says. Now, rule number four states that when we have a verb in the main clause in present perfect tense or past perfect tense, in the subordinate clause, the verb would be in past tense. Now, let's look at our examples. The first one says, she has been sick since she got back home. In this sentence, the main clause is, she has been sick. While the subordinate clause is, since she got back home. Now, the verb in the main clause is in present perfect tense, has been. And so the verb in the subordinate clause is in past tense because this is what our rule says. It says when you have a verb in the main clause in present perfect tense or past perfect tense, in the subordinate clause, the verb would be in past tense. Now, let's look at our second example. The students had submitted their homework before the teacher arrived. In this sentence, the main clause is, the students had submitted their homework, while the subordinate clause is, before the teacher arrived. Now, in the main clause, we find the verb had submitted in past perfect tense. And according to rule number four, which says when a verb in the main clause is in present perfect or past perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause would be in past tense. So we have here the verb arrived in past tense in the subordinate clause. So when we have here present perfect tense in the main clause, would have past tense in the subordinate clause while when we have past perfect tense in the main clause, we would also have past tense in the subordinate clause. So that's what rule number four says. When a main clause has a verb in present perfect or past perfect tense, the subordinate or dependent clause would have its verb in past tense.
Now, rule number five says, when the verb in the main clause is in the future perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause should be in present tense or present perfect tense. For example, most ladies will have been married by the time they graduate from school. In this sentence, the main clause is, most ladies will have been married. And the subordinate clause is, by the time they graduate from school. So according to rule number five, that says when you have your verb in the main clause, in future perfect tense, as we have here, the verb in the subordinate clause would be in present tense or can be in present tense or present perfect tense. So, will have been married is in future perfect tense and in the subordinate clause, the verb graduates or graduates, the verb graduates is in present tense. And we can also have it in present perfect tense like our example two here. Most ladies will have been married by the time they have graduated from school. So when you have the verb in the main clause in future perfect tense, the verb in the subordinate clause can either be in present tense or in present perfect tense. So that's what rule number five for sequence of tenses states. We've come to the end of our lesson today on introduction to sequence of tenses. But before we move to our test section, let's have a recap on all that we've learned so far. First of all, we said sequence of tenses refers to the way verbs in a particular sentence change their tenses. We also learned that in complex sentences, verbs in the subordinate clause change their tenses depending on the tense of the verb in the main clause. And lastly, we discussed certain rules which govern the way verbs change their tenses in sentences. Now let's move to our test section. Our question for today says, from the rule of sequence of tenses, choose the correct sentence below. A. She has been ill since she will get back home. B. She has been ill since she gets back home. And C. She has been ill since she got back home. The correct answer is C. She has been ill since she got back home. Remember one of our rules, we said that when you have a verb or when you have your verb in the main clause in present perfect tense. The verb in the subordinate clause would be in past tense. And from this sentence here, the main clause is she has been ill and the subordinate clause is since she got back home. And the verb in the main clause is has been, which is in present perfect tense. And so, the verb in the subordinate clause has to be in past tense, according to the rule which we stated earlier. So, if you picked C, you are correct. We've come to the end of our lesson today on sequence of tenses. Thank you for watching and see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can also turn on notifications to stay updated on new videos on this channel. This Brain Friend video was brought to you by Synforest. For more of these amazing e-learning videos, get your copy of Brain Friend. With more than a thousand e-learning videos, over 74,000 test items in more than 40 subjects, a career counseling guide, and many other amazing features, BrainFriend remains your foremost e-learning and exam preparatory software. BrainFriend. Learn better. Make excellent grades.